Welcome back to another edition of Retro Tech. Today in the Retro Hot Seat, we have a classic from Radio Shack. It's the 22188, also known as the Micronta 22188. Boy, gotta love that naming screen. Scheme. Scream. Scream. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Darren. Joining with us right now is my beautiful wife. Hello. How are you? Happy New Year, darling. <laughs> you talk like you've never seen me. <laughs> Happy New Year. Well, it's been about 10 minutes. Here's a Radio Shack <laughs> Classic, the 22188 LCD Digital Auto Ranging Multimeter from Radio Shack. Now, did you. You're from the Ukraine originally. Yes, I am. Did you ever have a Radio Shack in the Ukraine? No, from my knowledge, no, we don't. No, because we they were, I mean, if you were a North American kid growing up and you were just a tiny bit geeky, you spent time at Radio Shack. It was just a thing we did back in the day. Back in the day? Back in the day <laughs> when Radio Shacks were like everywhere. Okay, darling, take a chocolate. Have a New Year's chocolate. <laughs> it's just two of them. Well, you know. going to be one. There you go. And let's get this party started. A review. So looking at the box, look at that. $36.95 was the price. Somebody paid for this originally. Now it wasn't me. I had got this off of eBay a few years back. Um, apparently it was unused and it really is an unused multimeter. Gotta love those new old stock finds. And look at that. There was even a bill that came with this. I'm telling you. The date on this is 1992, January 13th. Whoa, I'm telling you, and guess what? They had it, they bought it on sale. They didn't pay $36.95. No, they paid, are you ready for this? $27.88 US dollars. Wow, that so was a deal. A handy lifetime. owner's manual uh, for the 22188. And it's actually really concise. It's all in English, um, gives you everything you need, all the low down, 10 mega, mega ohm input impedance. And you know what they did? What they did in those retro years, always, look at that, you got a schematic with your multimeter. Something burned out, something got hosed, you know the values, you know where to look. Ah, oh, schematics. Those test leads, my oh. rated 1,200 volts max. Whoa, I'm telling you. Now this is before all those CAT standards came into play, of course. I don't know if I'd really want to put these leads on 1,200 volts, but uh, yeah, that was the rating back in the Test leads have come a long, long way since the uh, 90s. Uh, a typical lead back then, really, you know, not, not the greatest sort of quality, definitely not silicon. It is very, very thick though, good gauge wiring here, um, but it is not pliable at all and it easily gets tangled in snafu and oh yeah, it's kind of painful. And there's the inputs, look at that. Yeah, no, no shrouding on these bad no. boys, no, they just went directly into that meter. Come sa. Like that, so yeah. Now the meter itself, I think this was a real beauty. Nice lines, uh, nice neutral coloring going on here. Look at the selector switch. Look at the, the, the line for your um, markings. I mean, that's nice and long. And you're definitely gonna know you're, you're on the range with that. Um, yeah, just overall, I think really pleasant looking multimeter. Um, unfortunately, this one had no tilt stand, no standing bill, nothing. It was, and as well, look at that, we have that rocker switch, the on off on the side of the multimeter, pretty common back in the 90s as well. Micronta 22-188 has a UL listing as well. Caution, 250 volt fuse, 0.315 amp fuse only. And as well, we have that Radio Shack signifier on the bottom. And the battery itself, simple slide out mechanism here, bada boom, bada bing, powered by two AA batteries. And if you've ever had a Radio Shack meter in the past, you know that those fuse ribbons are, wow, that's just a, a, a typical uh, feature that was on all of the Radio Shack and my Kronto meters um, way back when. It was so nice to see. It's just a little pull up ribbon basically. Makes taking out that fuse just that much simpler. Now when you turn that meter on, bada boom, bada bing, look at that. Gorgeous, uh, really small font, mind you, but very crisp, very clean. Uh, we're talking 30 plus years later, and uh, that display is still looking good. Radio Shack thought it was pretty cool. Easy to read LCD, and look at that single knob function control. Yes, Two of the highlights of this was pretty meter. basic. 2000 count, three and a half digit display. Uh, the decimal point and minus polarity indicators included. Okay, 30 years ago, it was good, it was good. Also, if you look close enough, you can see some special markings here. Almost looks like Braille. And that's basically an added safety feature to remind you of the measurement limitations and uh, where you are on that scale. Kind of cool. 
bolts. Starting off with the ranges at DC bolts up to 1000 volts. AC bolts up to 700. Unique fit. diode check. Resistance up to 2000 kilo ohm. Finally, low current DC milliamps up to 200 milliamps. Bottom left of the meter, we have our DC milliamp input as well as a resistance and the diode input. Finally, middle, we have our common or ground, and on the right, we have our voltage DC and AC volts. The selector switch is a little mushy, but you know what? It does get there with authority, and it does settle on a range. DC voltage precision test. We're looking at 4.99 volts. 5.00 is what we wanted to see. Oh, and we're seeing it kind of. Wow. So awesome in terms stuff. of a diode check, it is slightly different than what you see today. Uh, you're not going to get a forward voltage drop. No. All you're doing is basically checking for a short or an open under normal condition. Basically, the device is good. It's going to show you a value. That's it. That's all. And I'll give you a little look. See here, standard diode, and there we have 16.6 ohm, six ohms of resistance. And basically, that is telling us that the diode is good. So slightly different than what we get today. Probably not nearly as uh, useful, really. Unfortunately, the manual tells you that you cannot test leds with this multimeter as well just not enough juice coming out too bad i'm just shorting the leads here in resistance mode and yeah 0.1 of an ohm down to zero so not much resistance on these old leads haven't cleaned them or buffed them or anything either so uh well pretty good 100 ohm and we are showing up as around 99.6.7 ohm uh, into this excellent bed. boy just one screw one phillips behind and away you go and look at that inside shielding on both sides of this digital multimeter Ah, oh, well over wow. here on both sides we do have this additional layer uh, for the ground here we are with the main pcb look at that look at those size of those input jacks wow a little bit of flux on there residue, not to worry though. But uh, generally speaking, just gorgeous. The grounding spring at the bottom, the main rotary selector here, LCD display over here. We have it uh, attached by a ribbon cable. That is how it is uh, being fed uh, to the circuit on the PCB. And underneath that, we've got the main IC. That is the SXC1901F. That's actually manufactured by Seiko. And I looked high and low for data sheet, unfortunately. I could not find one, but if you have a data sheet on this, I'd love to see it. There's that grounding spring again, and look at those input jacks. Holy moly. There's the voltage, the common, and the uh, resistance, as well as the low current. But wow, that is just, just, gorgeous that old style pcb gotta love it main selector as well uh definitely uh not what we're used to seeing these days and this can actually come off by opening up that cotter pin as well and it would probably pop out but i'm not going to go that far i don't want to break this old micron that's doing so well there's the battery housing at the top two double a's go right there and there's that uh, fuse as well easy breezy to pop off and change not a problem rocker selector on off switch right here lots of through hole components back in the day we have a trim pot over here as well and uh, lots of trim pots actually well two to be exact um, but generally speaking nice very very nice and as I mentioned before that schematic included with the meter tells you all of the values of all of these components uh, everything so if you do happen to blow a component something goes self gets fried whatever um, but a boom bada bing easy troubleshooting easy replacement thanks to that schematic wow i miss those days hope you enjoyed this little trip down memory lane my kranta 22188 i love to stroll down memory lane darren me too it's like i don't know makes me feel oh so young again <laughs> thanks for taking the stroll with us